This is the most popular power supply on the market, but is that really a smart thing? The truth is that it's really hard to know. That's why eight years ago, we stopped making power supply videos altogether because doing them properly takes tens of thousands of dollars of equipment and years of education and doing them halfway is basically meaningless. But people still need power supplies, so what do they do? Well, they can either go hive mind and buy whatever's popular, or the smart folks have been relying on community resources like the LTT Forum power supply tier list. Unfortunately, as we're about to find out, a community of enthusiasts, however well-intentioned, doesn't always get it right. For example, they were right about the Thermaltake Smart Series. This thing is truly C tier at best. It didn't even survive our testing. But there's another unit that turned out to be really solid, even though it's actually buried with the other C tiers. Just like I buried this lazy C tier segue to our sponsor, iFixit. Celebrate iFixit's 20th anniversary and grab yourself a Pro Tech Toolkit this summer using the link below. There are two main questions we set out to answer today. One, is the smart series from Thermaltake that bad? And two, if it is, and it is, what can we recommend for gamers on a budget? In the long term, the goal for the labs team here is to test basically every power supply on the market and then capture the data in an easily digestible format. Unfortunately, that's a ways off. So to get you some answers faster, we ran through just enough models to provide a baseline and a confident recommendation. With that in mind then, let's look at the test setup. The big change is we finally have the last piece we need to test more than just the basics, an oscilloscope. Or, well, more accurately, we have three oscilloscopes. We're only gonna need one in the end, but like, you know, you should drive more than one car before you write the check and take it home. And these have car level price tags, so we wanted to test drive at least a few of them. An oscilloscope doesn't just allow us to perform more tests. More crucially, it allows us to verify that our tests are actually doing what we think they're doing, which we need because we now have a lot of tests. This one I'm running right now, for example, is part of the ATX specification. It's called the timing test, and it ensures that when the power supply gets jumpered and turns on and turns off, the rails come up to the levels that you expect in the order that you expect. This allows the system to wake from sleep and go back to sleep predictably. Now, we don't just run this once. We've got light loads, heavy loads. Actually, you can see there's an entire list of tests that it's gonna go through that takes about four hours. The good news is that the suite should be able to run once we've got everything dialed in with zero human intervention required, all culminating in this. Okay, we have a lot of work to do to make this readable by those of us who are not robots. Also, as I'm sure you've guessed, this nest of wires here will not exist in the final setup. And it's worth noting that adding extra wire length will have some adverse effects, including dropping our voltage readings a little bit. We've got big plans to enhance the test suite still though, so I just want you guys to know that the numbers in this video are only intended to be compared to each other and to collect feedback from our community on what you guys wanna see included in the future. This won't make it into our final database. Enough preamble though. Let's take a closer look at our contenders. As a baseline for a quality unit, we've got the Seasonic Prime TX650, but the main showdown that we're interested in here is the EVGA 450BR versus the Thermaltake Smart 600. These two $50 specimens perfectly demonstrate why buying a power supply on a budget can be really challenging. And part of that is the manufacturer's fault. I mean, you would think that price being equal, obviously you want the one that can provide a third more power, right? But as it turns out, surprise, surprise, the big number on the box doesn't tell the whole story. If we look closelier, we can see that while the Thermaltake Smart 600 is technically a 600 watt power supply, unlike most 600 watt units, it's actually only able to deliver about 500 watts on the 12 volt rail. And it relies on the five volt and 3.3 volt rails to make up the rest. Now in the past, you might've had three or four hard drives in your computer and a couple of CD burners. But these days, most people don't have any of that stuff and a single strong 12 volt rail is preferred. 
With that said though, 504 watts is still more than 450. So all other things being equal, EVGA is kind of looking like the loser here. Of course, all other things are not equal. Shifting gears, you might have noticed that our thermal take unit is only certified 80 plus white, which means that our 80 plus bronze challenger could have up to a 5% advantage in efficiency, depending on the load. Which brings us to the end of what we can learn from reading boxes and to the beginning of our testing. In the real world, the EVGA was actually only one to 2% more efficient. That's an amount that you aren't likely to notice on your monthly power bill. So let's dig deeper. Realistically, the main concern with a $50 power supply is, can this work reliably without burning my house down? So we'll start with short circuit testing. <laughs> Seriously, you guys, this will be automated. We have a whole box that does all this stuff as part of the power supply tester. But in order to illustrate what's happening, in the event that something bad were to happen in your computer, say a uh, plastic connector melted or something like that and the wires ended up touching each other, you would end up with a short circuit. If the power supply stayed on, even at 12 volts, it could start to push a serious amount of amperage, heating up those wires, melting plastic and causing a fire. So what you want to happen is when you touch these, the voltage should go to zero, the power supply should have to be reset, boop, Whoa, and I had them touching again when I did that. See, look, the system works. <laughs> and now it's back on. Wow. This Corsair unit worked perfectly. The good news is all the power supplies we tested, including the Thermal Take Smart, had no problem with this short circuit test. And that's good, because if they did, they are literal fire hazards and should not be legal to sell. Up next is over current protection. In this test, each rail which is essentially each voltage the power supply can deliver, gets loaded up to see how much power it'll put out before shutting off. And this one is a balancing act for manufacturers. I mean, they don't want your system to just shut off if there's a momentary spike in power draw during a gaming session and it goes to 505 watts. But if you were to exceed the rating of a power supply's internal components over a long period, you could easily damage them. Now, at first glance, it seemed like our Smart 600 was really able to dish out the power, delivering a staggering 71 amps on the 12 volt rail before it shut off. That's nearly as much as our premium Seasonic reference unit that costs over four times as much. And at 12 volts, that would be 840 watts. Man, you go thermal take, except there's a small problem. While it was delivering that 71 amps, the Smart 600 here dropped down to an appalling 8.6 volts on the 12 volt rail. That is so low that any real computer that was connected to it would be off at best. And it gets even worse. Over power protection is similar to over current protection, but is meant to protect the entire unit when all the rails are loaded at the same time. Now, the good news here is that overpower protection did work on all of our units. The bad news is that if overpower protection only works one time, we consider that to be a fail. And after tripping the overpower protection on our smart 600 watt, it never turned back on again. You can pay your respects by purchasing our new capacitor water bottle on lttstore.com. So I'd much rather take the 530 watts that the EVGA BR450 was able to deliver, knowing that if I ever did overload it, it would be able to turn back on, which earns it a link to buy down in the video description. So, uh, <laughs> wow, Linus. <laughs> Good job. The conclusion is to just buy from a reputable brand like EVGA and then you're good to go. Right? Not so fast. This is the EVGA 401. And at first glance, it looks like a pretty good deal. It's $40, so you'd probably expect it to be basically a slightly less powerful 450 BR then. But oh no, this one is a doozy. To understand just why the 401 is so terrible, we need to talk about power factor correction or PFC. The power factor of a power supply is the ratio of true power, AKA the power that's being used to run your computer, 
and apparent power, which is how much power the electricity company has to supply. But wait, why would your utility company have to supply extra power that you didn't use in your PC? Ah, if your power supply has a bad power factor, it's essentially pushing back against the AC source from the wall. So even though you didn't use that power, the power company still had to deliver a bit extra to compensate for your power supply sending bad power back through the lines. Typically, this is negligible since your power supply should overcome this by having the current draw be in phase with the AC source. But I bring all of this up because the EVGA 400N1 has the worst power factor correction that we've ever tested. Every other unit we tested had a power factor of nearly 0.99. That means that 99% of the electricity that you're pulling is being turned into useful work. With the EVGA 400N1, the power factor is about 0.5. To put real numbers to this, with the Corsair SF450, we've been using this one to validate a lot of our test suite, it was able to deliver 471 watts while drawing 4.9 amps from the wall. With the EVGA 400N1, it was able to do 427 watts while it was drawing 9.3 amps from the wall. Fortunately, in most residential settings, you will only be charged for true power. So this won't directly affect your energy bill, but it is horribly inefficient for the power grid. Making things even worse, the AC to DC conversion efficiency of the 400N1 is also trash, coming in nearly 5% worse than the BR450. As the cherry on top, after our overpower protection test, the 400N1 never turned on again. So there's some good news and some bad news here. The bad news is you just can't trust that manufacturers will highlight the most relevant numbers on their boxes, and you also can't trust that a reputable brand will always be reputable. The good news is that this means that this was an excellent investment and there is so much more to come in the future. We've only scratched the surface of what our power supply tester is capable of. Today, we focused on the basics, like efficiency and safety protections, because for budget power supplies, that's what matters the most. But as our test methodology improves, so will the conclusions we'll be able to draw. Telling who makes the best, you know, 1000 watt, 80 plus titanium power supply, well, that's gonna come down to much more subtle things like how solid is the 12 volt when you suddenly load it up? Uh, does the power supply introduce any noise into the circuit? How about if the power is dirty in your region or you experience frequent brownouts? We've had many an overclock suddenly fail when we arrive on set with lights and a bunch of other stuff plugged in. We did actually try out some of these tests on our budget power supplies today and much like the rest of this video, the Thermaltake Smart 600 and the EVGA 400N1 did horribly, while the EVGA 450BR did a pretty decent job. But the details of all of that weren't terribly important when two out of the three stopped working altogether. So, and I'm jazzed, guys. We are just a couple steps away from being able to attach a power supply to this thing, press go, and just bask in all the data and graphs that will prove precisely who makes the best power supply for your money. I think the only thing more accurate is this nanovolt accurate segue to our sponsor. iFixit. iFixit wants to help you repair or upgrade everything from your phone to your home appliances, whether those gadgets want it or not. Oh, you're getting fixed. I'm the papa. Their ProTech kit has 64 steel bits and the popular steel blade jimmy for precise prying. It's also got suction cups, a driver extension, anti-static wrist straps, and more. Plus, everything is covered by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Save time and money by repairing your own electronics using one of iFixit's over 70,000 detailed step-by-step -step guides. There's even fun pictures in there to help you understand, oh, that's what a tweezer is. Celebrate iFixit's 20th anniversary at ifixit.com LTT or at the link below. If you guys enjoyed this video, why don't you go check out how power supplies work? Turbo Nerd Edition. It'll give you a good foundation to understand some of the upcoming content.